Why cricket? So uh, cricket is believed and proven to be a very efficient alternative protein compared to animal protein. So they need like a hundred less time uh, feed, two thousand times less water, and then they grow faster. They just need to have only like one and a half month maximum to have one batch of production. My name is Becky. I am the co-founder and the business development director at Cricket One. So Cricket One, we have the technologies and know-how to farm and process cricket into different food and beverage ingredients. Uh, we have been exporting our product to four different continents across 18 countries. Uh, we are classified as one of the largest uh, producer and supplier globally in the market at this moment. So on the scale of efficiency, environmental impact, there is a great candidate to resolve the problem with a food crisis, with the climate change. They actually taste very well. They're easy to go along with the other ingredient, existing ingredients to make different food. And then uh, you're gonna see like new product, like the meat uh, imitate product, that it tastes like meat, but it doesn't require meat, that use in insect like cricket in, as a key ingredient. How did we start it with this project? Um, so my co-founder and I, we both have a background working toward sustainable agriculture. Uh, we both believe in uh, sustainability and we see the business opportunity out of it and decided to pursue this uh, journey immediately. Where do I see um, Vietnam agriculture for the next five years? I believe we're still holding a very important position and still holding the, the job, the role, to secure the food supply uh, globally. What investors need to uh, look into when they have intention to enter Vietnamese market. The biggest advantage is you have such a strong branding of the country. So we believe in Australian product. We know the quality, we know how dif difficult that market is. So we believe in the technologies, believe in the know-how, and believe in even like the practice how to get the product to that level of trustworthy. So as an investor, you need to understand the culture, you need to understand the, the existing farming practices here, the scale and also the mindset of people before you enter it. 30% of our GDP is coming from agriculture, but when it comes to the agricultural practices, we don't have a big centralised farming area. 85% of our farming labour force are coming from the small household which means each farmer they have around like 1.4 or 1.5 hectares of land and then uh, like those small scale farming, very basic. That is one thing and then the consequence of like small household farming is it's very difficult for you to introduce or to try to sell technologies that where we can optimize, we can see the benefit in terms of uh, efficiency, in terms of like cost wise and, and return on investment to deploy that technology. Time matter. Time is also money. So try to find a local partner that, 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 that can support you with that. Try to look for um, the, the trade department of the embassy or the association. For example, it's like most of the key sectors in Vietnam, there's always a very well performing association where you can come for advice, you can come for um, like market entries uh, tactic and also they can also, also introduce you to the right contacts to work with. For example, is uh, toward Australia and Vietnam relationship. So I would say DFAT, there's a representative in Vietnam where they promote the, the, the collaboration between Vietnamese and Australian companies. Um, they have all of the knowledge about the market entries, the regulations, the market size, and, and even the potential, or even like any um, uh, risk or, or unstable thing that, 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 that an investor needs to pay attention when looking to the market.